This story takes place in Northeast Oklahoma, I believe sometime around 2009 or 2010. I was around 14 years old when this happened. Back then, my aunt and I did everything together. She was my best friend, my rock, and my everything really. Our favorite thing to do in our boring and rural town was to just go driving around and explore. I believe I'd just finished school for the summer, and it was sometime around May. She offered to take me on a celebratory drive around town. In my hometown, there's an old mental hospital that's been closed since the 1990s at least. It's located more in an off-the-beaten-path area. I'd always been fascinated by it, and she was too. She'd even worked there as a teenager. There was a prison located extremely close to it as well, with guards and white trucks frequently driving down the roads. This also had the side effect of preventing people from trying to sneak into that old abandoned mental hospital. We both decided on trying to drive around and check it out anyway. It was just way too cool and creepy. There was a cemetery too, where they'd buried many of the patients that passed away there, just beyond the hospital and where the doctors used to live. Past the cemetery, there was basically nothing. You were far, far from the town by this point. There was only a single lane, lone winding road. We were driving, having fun, just talking about anything and everything. It was late afternoon by this point, around 4.30 or so. It was just like any old drive we'd been down so many times. That was until I looked into the rear view mirror and saw a white Jeep Cherokee right behind us. It had seemingly come out of nowhere. We both shrugged it off and thought it must be one of those prison guards or something. We kept on driving, thinking eventually they'd go do their own thing. It became very unnerving though, when the longer we drove, they just never turned off onto a side road. Instead, they just kept on following us. I remember my aunt was trying to play it calm, but I knew she was fully freaking out. She kept on asking me, is he still following us? There were times when I didn't see him at first. I'd say, no, I don't see him. And then the next minute when I looked away and looked back, he was right behind us again. He got close enough at one point that I could see a bit of his face. He was wearing what looked to be some Carrera sunglasses, very big and bulky. His dashboard was completely covered with junk. We kept on driving further on this road, right into the middle of nowhere. There were several times we'd lose him and feel so relieved, only for him to come barreling back down a side road or over a hill or something. At one point, we came to a railroad crossing. After we passed it, I didn't see him anymore. I kept a close eye out, trying to find where he was. He appeared once again and followed us for hours. If we sped up, so did he. I still get chills at the memory of looking in the rearview mirror and seeing parts of his face. He chased us so far into the rural areas that we couldn't even get a cell phone signal anymore. Eventually, we went so far we emerged onto a highway. We had no idea where we were. We were elated to get back to a main road though. As we turned onto it, my aunt really kicked up the speed. I remember we got back to my mom's house, still full of fear and adrenaline. We frantically said, we were out driving and this guy started following us. My aunt finally broke down and confessed how scared she was. We never told the police or anything, and my mom always thought we were just making a big deal out of nothing. But it was really terrifying. We were out in the middle of nowhere, chased into an area with no cell phone signal, with a strange car following behind us the entire time. I remember we talked about it afterwards. Like, what if she had run out of gas? What if her car broke down? What could we have possibly done in that circumstance? When I was 17, I was living in one of those small towns without the community feel. It was a toxic place rampant with drug addiction and lots of crime. I learned from a young age to always watch my back and where to not go past dark ever. This town held a lot of trauma for me, some even scarier than this incident I'm about to share with you. I left the town a few short months after this happened, and I would never think of moving back at any point in my life. For context, I was working a lot and finishing up my senior year. 
We didn't have a working washer and dryer at home, so I had to go to the laundromat to do my laundry every time. We lived on the outside of town, so it took about 10 minutes to drive into it. We were so secluded out there. There were no streetlights at all, and I lived on a street right in between two mountains. We were just down the street from this abandoned dairy farm. We had acres to ourselves. There was really nothing out there. It was so dark you could barely see 10 feet in front of you. There was only my street and the cross street to get to my street, so you knew every time a car was going down this road. One afternoon, I found some time to take my laundry to the laundromat and took my mom and brother's laundry as well, so my mom wouldn't have to go during her work week. This meant I had three times as much to do, and it would take much longer at the laundromat. Still though, there was a Hastings next door, so I didn't really worry too much, as long as I was still able to leave before dark. This was not a very good area to be stuck in. By the time I left, the sun was just almost going down, so it pretty much worked out. By the time I was on the cross street to get to my own street, though, it was completely pitch black. I was all alone out there. I thought so, at least. I turned down onto my street, and within seconds, someone appeared behind me, as close as they could possibly get without slamming into my car. They had their brights on as well. This confused me. I had seen no other cars on the road or behind me before I'd turned onto my street. It's like their lights were off until they were directly behind me. This gave me a pit in my stomach. I sped up, but they kept perfect pace with me, right behind. It was a windy dark road. My headlights wouldn't illuminate much. I was starting to get very anxious. I made a split moment judgment call and drove right past my own driveway. I didn't feel right alerting some random person to where I lived with my mom and baby brother there. Especially so because cell phone reception was barely existent in our area. The person behind me was still touching bumper to bumper almost, even with me speeding up. I knew that up ahead there was a fork in the road. Going straight ahead would lead to the downtown area. It's the way people go when they're heading that way. To the left, you entered a residential area with a few homes, and a road that only really allowed one car at a time. At the last second, I turned down this street without turning my blinker on. I hoped I'd be able to trick the car behind me into keeping driving straight. They made a very sharp turn and followed right behind me though. By this point, I was extremely scared, but I was still hopeful that maybe the car behind me just lived in the area or something. By now, we were going close to 50 down these residential streets and speeding up even more. The car behind me would not back off at all. They stayed so close I couldn't even tell the make of their vehicle or see if they were driving a car or SUV. I couldn't even tell who was inside. I didn't understand why they were sticking so close. I was afraid if I slowed down at all they'd bump into me and ram me off the road. All of a sudden, I saw a home directly in front of me. The street was at a 90 degree angle. I had to turn left immediately or risk crashing into that house. Luckily, my car made the turn. I made a left to go onto the road that leads to downtown. The car was still behind me, which showed clearly they did not live in this area. At this point, I was certain they were following me. I made the decision to drive to the sheriff's office. By now, we were going 60 in a 25 mile per hour zone. We started to pass a street I recognized would lead to the sheriff's office. I made the turn so sharply because of our speed, the car behind me couldn't quite make it and kept on driving forward. I drove around and made a lot of turns to ensure the car would not be able to follow me once again. Finally, I pulled over in the dark and cried. I was safe this time, but I went home terrified and I changed the way I drive to this day. I moved to a more populated city and I live in a large apartment complex now. I still drive past my old area. I always get a weird feeling someone will appear behind me. Anytime someone does pull in behind me, I drive right past my apartment and circle the complex until I'm sure they're not following me. My paranoia saved me that night. Possibly also my mom and baby brother from something that could have been so much worse. Always pay attention to the people behind you. Context. I'm an 18-year-old female, working the 4pm to midnight shift at a nice, clean gas station convenience store 
somewhere in Canada. Because the location of my workplace is located right beside a highway, it's very common for people to settle in the parking lot for a while, or perhaps even the entire night. What isn't common, though, is when someone parks right outside the window beside the cash register, parallel to the building. It was about 11 p.m. I was just preparing to close my shift, excited to go home and get some rest. I still lived with my parents at the time since I was only 18. A rush of customers came and went, when I noticed a car parked weirdly outside. Right beside the cash register, there's a huge window in order for the workers to look out to see the customers at the pumps. Mind you, many people had parked there momentarily before, but none had ever parked parallel to the store snuggled right up against the curb. Whatever, I thought. Maybe someone that was just especially exhausted. 11.30 rolled around, and the car was still parked there. I had to go outside to shut the oil shack, which happened to be right next to where this car was parked. As I closed the shack, I looked into the car to see the driver's seat reclined all the way back. A man was laying back with a smirk on his face. I rushed inside and got behind the counter, right as one of my regulars walked in. I pointed out the man in the car, joking that he must be waiting for me. The regular seemed to actually be worried, telling me to call the cops. He warned me to be safe and said that he had to get back to work. I decided against doing so, though. The guy could have easily just been resting after an especially long haul. At around 11.45, though, I decided to at least call my sister. The guy was still outside. We lived about 15 minutes away from my workplace, the perfect amount of time for her to get there in time for my closing. I told her the lowdown, to which she responded she was leaving right at that moment and would be there soon. At 11.48, the man left his car. Well, shit, I was closing in less than 10 minutes, and now he decided he wanted to get a snack or something. I watched him, and I noticed he was walking around near the pumps, sort of staring off into the sky and swaying. Later, I assumed he must have been looking for cameras. At 11.50, he walked into the store, not paying any attention to me at all. Instead, he walked right toward the bathrooms. A couple of customers walked in. Because I was busy with them, I assumed the man may have walked out without me knowing so. At 12.01, my sister showed up. Thank God. I could see the guy's car was still parked outside, but there was no sign of the man. She came in and asked what was up. I asked if she had seen him anywhere. She replied no, and that's when my heartbeat increased. I looked at the bathroom doors, where both signs were green. When the bathroom lights are on, you can see a glow from underneath the doorway. The lack of glow made me assume there was no one in either, because the lights are motion censored. I told my sister I had no idea where he was, assuming both bathrooms were vacant. I began to go locking the doors and shutting off all the lights. My sister, with her balls of steel, opened the woman's bathroom just to check. Guess who was there, sitting on the toilet waiting. She closed the door and began shouting at him that the store was closing. A couple of minutes passed and the man was still hiding there in a stall. It was about 12.08 now, when the creep finally left the bathroom. He grabbed a random cookie, slapped a dollar on the counter and walked out. He never even looked at me. He got right into his car and sped off in a hurry. I finished locking up the rest of the place and met my sister at a Tim Hortons nearby. Had my sister not been there, I don't know what the outcome would have been when I walked into the bathrooms to do all the closing stuff for the night. I could easily not be typing this right now. Thankfully, that day at the beginning of my shift, I put in my two weeks notice. I had to work the next night, which was pretty uneventful, but even then I was scared to even go outside. After telling my parents what happened, my mom pointed out the man might have been scanning the property for cameras and gone into the bathroom to wait for me to check them during the closing process of the store. He must have parked parallel for a quicker getaway. I'm so glad I'm done working there now. I was on a solo road trip several years back and had fancied that I could make an 18-hour drive in one go. I was wrong, of course. I started to pass out at the wheel, so I decided I needed to take a nap somewhere right away. And the closest thing for many miles was a tiny gas station 
set just off a mountain right in the middle of nowhere. Dark landscape as far as you could see. There were some truckers ahead and behind on the road, but not much else. As I pulled in, I saw there was one car at the station that I assume must belong to the clerk. I parked where I was still illuminated by the station's lights, but away from the main parking spaces. I didn't want anybody to pull up next to me for any reason. I set an alarm for 45 minutes of rest and figured I'd see how I felt after. Suddenly though, I was awoken and glanced at my watch. Only about 20 minutes had passed by. I glanced out my driver's side window and found myself making eye contact with a random man. A truck had pulled up about a space away from my car. There was no passenger. The driver was in his passenger side with his front and back passenger doors open. He had this long, massive chain in his hands and seemed to be pulling it out of the back of his truck, watching me sleep. A second after we made eye contact, he froze. He stood still as a statue and glared right at me. He began to quickly tug at the chain and took a step towards my window while not breaking eye contact. My keys were still in the ignition luckily, so I made a very hasty exit. As I pulled away, the man in my rear view mirror had moved to the back of his truck. He stood in the truck bed and watched me drive off. I can't prove he was doing something nefarious, but why did he park right next to me when I'd parked way out of the way? He also didn't need to watch me sleep. He didn't need to step towards my window with that big chain. I'm not sure what he was doing with it honestly. There was nothing in his truck bed visible or around his truck that would call for a chain of that size. I definitely didn't stick around to see what he was doing. And why did he watch me drive away so menacingly? I'm going to tell you a story that happened when I was 17. It still freaks me out so much. I don't even know what happened that day. Honestly, I'd like to have your opinion on it. It was in November, and my friend Jacob was going to have his birthday. For the past 17 years, I'd been the best of friends for him. I proposed he sleep over at my house and have some fun together, then go for a walk the next day with some of our friends in the forest. He thought it sounded really fun. Everything started going well at first. He slept over at my place, and the very next day, we left with some friends for two hours of road trips. Well, four-ish trips, really. It was a bit far as at the time I lived in the city center. After we got on the road though, I realized I'd forgotten the keys to my house at home. Therefore, the door to my house was not locked. I told myself though, hey, we're in town and few people frequent the suburbs anyway. The day was going pretty well. It was about time to get home. I was a bit stressed, not knowing if my house had been robbed or what might have happened in the meantime. In the end though, I said to myself there was very little chance that it happened. There was not much crime in the area after all. My friend Jacob wanted to spend more time with me before I left for my studies. I accepted his offer and we went back home together. We walked inside and I saw my house was completely intact, even though it had been left unlocked. I walked around with a bit of relief until I suddenly noticed something. The cellar door, which I never opened, was wide open. There was a piece of white paper on the floor. I quickly realized we had to call the police and check if there was anyone there. To reassure myself, me and Jacob decided to shout that if the stranger didn't come out, the police would take care of them. I was paralyzed with fear. I feared that someone would come bursting out of the basement and attack us or something. My worst fears were realized when the stranger who was hiding in the cellar called out to us. You're not supposed to be home. Jacob got scared and asked me to come with him to meet up with the police that we called. Luckily, they'd already arrived. They went down to the basement and took the man away by car. The police found him hiding with some kitchen knives, an axe, some iron chains, and a board. There was also a white sheet of paper on which was written, Behind you. I didn't understand from the beginning what was going on here. The police told me later the individual ran away from a mental health facility or something. He was having a psychotic episode, I believe. I'm 25 now, and I always check to make sure I've locked the house after this.
What is up guys, Blue Spooky here as always. It's been a while since my last outro, so I figured I'd do one again. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, or subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any constructive criticism you'd like to share with me, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Although I can't respond to every comment I get nowadays anymore, I still do read all of them and I enjoy hearing your guys' thoughts and opinions, especially of your opinions on the stories in the videos. If you guys have some stories you'd like to share yourselves, please be sure to check in the description below the video. There will be links to all of my social media including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Be sure to send me a message on any of those and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has a type, and how you'd like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. Also, please be sure to properly format and add as much detail as you feel comfortable with to ensure the most probability your story makes it into a video. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for now though. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.